guys, it's Abby. Welcome to my channel. We're going to be discussing the structure of water and all its basic properties and why these are biologically important. Okay, so the structure of water. So the molecular formula for water is H2O and the hydrogen atoms are covalently bonded to the oxygen atom. Remember, covalent bonding is sharing pairs of electrons in order to complete a full outer shell usually and achieve stability. One of the key words when discussing water is polar. This basically means that there is an unequal distribution of electrical charge. So because oxygen has more protons than hydrogen, it attracts the electrons in these covalent bonds towards it, giving it a partially negative delta negative charge compared to the hydrogen atoms, which have a delta positive charge. And this key property of water means that it can hydrogen bond. So if we have, we've got a hydrogen bond between a delta negative oxygen and a delta positive hydrogen. So water is also really important in metabolism, which is all the chemical reactions that basically take place in the body. Water is a metabolite, which means it's a chemical substance that takes part in a chemical reaction. So water usually takes place in hydrolysis reactions, which use H2O to break an existing bond, for example in the digestion of polymers, and then condensation reactions where H2O is released when a new bond is formed, for example amino acids joining together to create a polypeptide. So the first and really important property of water is its latent heat of vaporisation. So latent heat of vaporisation is basically the heat required to convert a liquid into a gas. Now, water's latent heat of vaporisation is very high, which basically means it requires a lot of energy to convert it from a liquid to a gas. Now, the biological importance of this is that Heat can be lost from a surface when it evaporates from it, which acts as a cooling mechanism. For example, sweating. And animals that live in deserts would not be able to survive without this mechanism. The next really important property of water is its specific heat capacity. So specific heat capacity is basically the heat energy required to increase the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by a given amount. Water specific heat capacity is very high. In fact, it is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. You do not need to know that, but you just need to know that it's high. As the biological importance of this is that water can act as a temperature buffer, so it can resist changes in temperature. For example, it allows us to um, have a thermostable internal environment so that we provide the right temperature within our bodies for enzymes to work. Also, it makes um, water a really good habitat as the temperature underwater is likely to be more stable than on land so organisms can live in extreme climates underwater. Water is also known as the universal solvent. This means that it dissolves more substances than any other solvent on earth however this does not mean it dissolves all substances. The reason for this is due to water's polarity. Now, water will dissolve hydrophilic substances. These are substances that are polar um, or ionic and the water is attracted to them. So the positive end of the water molecule will be attracted to the negative ion and the negative end of the water molecule will be attracted to the positive ions. This means that the ions get totally surrounded by water molecules and therefore they dissolve. 
However, water cannot dissolve hydrophobic substances. So these are substances which are non-polar or uncharged, for example, lipids. Biological importance of this is that chemical reactions inside cells happen faster in aqueous solutions. Water also has cohesive properties. So cohesion is basically the attraction between molecules of the same type, in this case two water molecules. And the reason the water molecules tend to stick together is due to these hydrogen bonds. The biological importance of this is that it allows water to flow, making it great for transporting substances. For example, water is drawn up plants through the xylem, narrow tubes, against the force of gravity. And this is known as capillary action. Also, if you think about pond skaters on the surface of water, the reason they can walk on the surface of the water is because of the strong cohesion on this top layer. Because there's no water molecules above this top layer, they have stronger cohesive forces between them, allowing this top layer to have a higher surface tension. And that's what allows pond skaters to walk on the water. Water also has a low viscosity. So viscosity is basically the thickness of a liquid. And this basically allows water molecules to easily slide past each other. So water can flow easily, making it great as a lubricant. So for example, mucus in the digestive system or synovial fluid around the joints. Well, I've got a quick demonstration for you. So if we put this ice in this cup of water, it floats. This probably doesn't come as a surprise to you, but it's really important because it means that ice is less dense than water. This is quite unusual because for most substances, their solid form is more dense. It's heavier than the liquid form. However, this is different with water. In fact, water is it's most dense at 4 degrees Celsius. The reason for this density change is where in liquid water, the hydrogen bonds are constantly being broken and remade. They're quite weak. However, when water freezes, each molecule forms hydrogen bonds with four others, and this creates a lattice that holds the molecules further apart than when they're held together in liquid. So we've got oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. And you create this kind of lattice structure. And the biological importance of this is that ice floats on water, therefore it insulates organisms to live below. The last property of water we're going to talk about today is its transparency. So transparency basically means that it allows light to pass through. Now the biological importance of this is that underwater plants can photosynthesise. Okay, so now I'll pause the video and have a go at some of these questions. Question one, what is a hydrolysis reaction? A hydrolysis reaction is a reaction that uses a molecule of water to break a bond. Question two, does water have a high or low latent heat of vaporisation? It has a high latent heat of vaporisation, which means it requires a lot of energy to convert it from a liquid to a gas. What is the biological importance of the high specific heat capacity of water? Basically, it means that it can act as a temperature buffer, resist changes in temperature, so we can maintain a thermostable environment within ourselves and also in water for organisms to live. What is the name given to substances that dissolve well in water? That's hydrophilic. Remember hydrophobic is substances that do not dissolve well in water. What bonds do water molecules form with other water molecules? Hydrogen bonds. 
that's due to the water's polarity. Why is the cohesion of water important? It allows water molecules to stick together and flow through tubes against the force of gravity, so for example with capillary action. Water flows in continuous columns. Why is it good that ice floats? Because it insulates water below. For organisms to live and does water have a high or low viscosity remember viscosity is the thickness of a liquid water has a low viscosity it's quite thin and it flows really easily okay thank you for watching this video on water i hope you enjoyed it and learned something <laughs>